Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial number 42, I believe. In this tutorial, we're going to work on moving our character around in game uh, via spawn point. So, wherever we put this little spawn point is where our character will originally spawn in game. So, let's go ahead and open up Unity. Now, for terrain, I've basically just been putting a flat cube at the bottom. I'm actually going to go ahead and create a terrain for this one. Now it's your standard terrain, if I look at the set resolution, so it's 2,000 wide, 2,000 long, 600 high, I'm not going to bother changing any of these. Uh, there it is right there. I am going to add a little bit of texturing to it. Now I'm not going to go over in depth on how to actually sculpt a terrain. There's tons of, tons of tutorials for that already. Uh, if you actually want me to go over that, that'd be fine, I don't mind. But for now, I just want to add a little bit of shape to my terrain a bit. There we go. So I'm going to zoom in. I just want a little area so I can have some sort of depth to it. And since I do have standard assets here, I am going to actually add a texture. Just so it doesn't look so gray. And the texture we get here. There we go. It's throwing me off because I'm used to having a much larger resolution so everything's moved down. So we'll just add a texture. Uh, we'll select one from the drop down. I just want a grassy texture. Uh, here, grass hill. Fine. I'm not going to bother messing with the tile offsets. And there we go. We have a nice little grassy texture. So let's go ahead and create a game object. It's going to be an empty. We're just going to call this player spawn point. I'm going to zero it out so I can find it easily. Make sure you have the little arrows clicked. And I'm just going to drag it to where I want it to be. I'm going to zoom in. So I've got it where I want it on the X and the Z. But I am going to move it up just a little bit because when our player spawns, once we start adding a rigid body to it or some sort of something that's affected by gravity it's going to fall to the earth and you don't want it to spawn below your train or else it'll just fall right through but that's fine just the way it is now I'm just going to copy the name so I don't spell it wrong I'm going to open up mono development and it would be game settings I'm actually going to set this as a constant at the top with the name of that spawn point is So it will be public, constant, it's a string, and I'm just going to call it player spawn point. And of course I didn't leave any underscores. And then in that string, I'm going to store what I'm calling it. Now I'm doing it this way here so I can just save it under my game settings and never ever have to worry about what it's called. So every level of my game where I want the player to spawn, I'll create this object, player spawn point. And in all my other scripts, when I'm looking for where I want the player to spawn, I'll just go to the game settings and look up this constant. While I'm here, I am going to comment that since we're doing a lot of that recently. Uh, this is the name of the game object that the player will spawn at at the start. Will spawn at the start of the level. Okay, so we got that done. Now in your game master scripts, where we want to actually look for that game object, if it doesn't exist, create it. And then uh, when we're instantiating our player, instead of putting it on vector 3.0, we're going to put it on the exact same spot where our, our player spawn point is. 
So in the start block, I'm going to create a game object that I'm just going to call Geo because we're not going to keep it. And it's just simply going to be a game object dot find. And then the name, which is game settings. If I spell it right, <laughs> game settings dot player spawn point. Now I'm going to want to make sure that that object actually does exist. And if not, then we're going to create it. So let's do a simple test on it. If geo equals null, we'll do some stuff. So what's this do? So it's taking a look at geo, which is the game object we have up here, which is just holding the reference to the game object that we're looking for. And of course, we're passing the name in here of the object that we're looking for. And it's checking to see if it equals null. So if this fails to find the game object for whatever reason, it's going to be a null. So when we check to see if it's a null, that means that it, it couldn't find it. So what we're going to want to do is instantiate it. So in here we'll say geo equals, actually even before that, let's do a debug. So we're going to say debug dot log. And I'm going to use a warning here. And I'm just going to say, I cannot find spawn point. And let's call it player spawn point so we know what spawn point it couldn't find. Now I'm just going to save that off. And I'm going to delete it. Now if we start this up, and take a look. Cannot find player spawn point. It's because we deleted it. Let's put it back in. Game object. Create empty. And we call it player spawn point. Let's run it again. We'll stop it. Take a look at the top again. And we'll see that it doesn't show that. That's a great use of a warning. So now let's go ahead and actually have our script create that game object. Now we've been exposed to the instantiate command, but in order to instantiate, we actually have to have a game object already to create. And since we don't already have one, we're just going to create it right from scratch. So we're going to use the same variable, geo, and we're going to say equals new game object. So what we're doing here is actually creating a game object just from scratch. There's going to be nothing attached to it. There's going to be nothing special about it. And if we leave it like this, it won't even have a name. So let's actually go ahead and name it. And we're going to use the string that we saved in our game settings again. The player spawn point. Now let's save that off. I'm going to delete my player spawn point. And when I hit play, if you watch over here, you'll see that it actually creates it for us. There we go. But we're, it's going to be in 000. It's not exactly where we wanted it. And of course, if we look at the console, we'll see that we have the cannot find player spawn point. So we're actually going to need to be able to move it to some spot. So I'm going to take this log warning. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it right below and just say that it created it. So we created player spawn point. Now we actually want to move it to the spot we want. Now this game master script I'm creating is actually just going to be the game master script for this level. So I'm actually going to store the position that I want it to be right here. And it will be private. I'm going to make it public at first just till I get it placed. Actually no, we'll just keep the whole thing private. So we're going to say private. It's going to be a vector three. And I'm going to call it underscore player spawn point pos for position. 
and I'm going to comment that. This is the place in 3D space where, where I want my player to spawn. And then down here, I'm going to say geo dot transform to get its transform and that and then dot position is equal to player spawn point pos so after it's done creating it it's going to move it to where I want it to be and let's add another debug log warning to that actually these don't really need to be warnings we should just make them logs Warning should be when something happens that doesn't break the game, but it was unexpected. So we're going to say moved player spawn point. And I'm going to switch this one from a warning to just a regular log. So now how do we initialize this? Well, we'll go into our 3D scene. And let's actually find the position we want it to spawn. So I'm just going to create another empty. And it looks pretty close to where I want it. Maybe move it back a bit. And up. And let's just clean this up. So the X is 240. I'm going to make the Y 6. And we'll just make this 116. So 246, 116. So over here, I'll just say new or is equal to new. Actually, no, let's do that down here. So player spawn point pos is equal to new vector 3 and then the coordinates, which I forgot already. 246, 116. So 240, 6, 116. The default position for our player spawn point. Great, so let's delete this, start it up, and where's that spot? Right where we wanted it. Now let's move our character there when it's instantiated. So we can just take this line of code, and when we're instantiating our character, paste it in. We'll save that off, go take another look, and there we go. You notice our character is right where our player spawn point is. There's our spawn point, there's our PC, and we already magically have a camera following them.